and I think we are we are ready to get started. I have a confession to make. I love cake. I got married recently, so I know firsthand how important it is for that cake to arrive in perfect condition, exactly as expected. I would have been one disappointed bride if my lovely Boston cream cake arrived warm, smashed, or otherwise damaged. Luckily, our baker used best shipping practices to make sure our cake arrived in perfect condition. But how can we make sure your cakes arrive intact? Let's explore together. My name is Laura Shemansky. I am in sales, design, and marketing here at Polar Tech, and I am pleased to co-present this webinar with my friend and colleague, Samantha Sandler in sales. Samantha, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Hello, I am Samantha Sandler. I too also really enjoy cake. I have been with Polar Tech for six years. I started as an inside sales position and transitioned to out, outside sales at the beginning of 2020. I love working with customers that provide cold chain solutions so we can ship your product nationwide any time of the year. Thank you. Welcome to our webinar, How to Ship Your Cakes and Pies. On one hand, you might have been too unsure to start shipping your creations. On the other hand, you might have already forayed into it and discovered the difficulties of, of shipping your cakes and pies. All your careful crafting may have been for nothing if it arrives ruined at your customer's door. Samantha, have you heard stories about bakers' struggles to keep their cakes intact during transit? Absolutely. One that sticks out is from a few years ago when I first started with Polar Tech. We received a, a cake. Our, our customer wanted to help us pack out their product. They had shipped it with no ice packs, just in a cardboard box, not refrigerated or frozen. So by the time it got to Polar Tech, we opened it up and it was just a giant smashed chocolate mess. Um, we hope to help our customers make sure this never happens to you. Exactly. We want to be able to turn <laughs> stories like that around. So by the end of today, you will be able to confidently create your own custom shipping solution for your cakes and pies. Here's the roadmap. Step one, measure your product. Step two, estimate how much refrigerant to use. Step three, select a type of refrigerant to use. Step four, pick a container. And step five, pack out your payload. But before we explore these specific steps, I want to briefly introduce you to our company, Polar Tech Industries. Polar Tech has been in business since 1984, so for 38 years. As you could tell from the screen, we have quite a few things that we offer, but that's not all that we offer. Samantha, would you like to go into more detail? Absolutely. Polar Tech manufactures molded EPS foam containers, refrigerant, and dry ice equipment. And we also sell hundreds of items to start your cold chain shipping journey from temperature awareness labels, refrigerators, temperature monitoring tabs, tags, absorbent wadding, boxes, tape, protective foam corners, bottle ship shippers, and more. We cover quite a few things to get you started and to continue your journey into shipping. We stand behind our quality. For example, our insulated foam containers, the density of them surpasses our competition by 20%, meaning it will be superior protection both for insulation and for physical protection against the shocks in, in shipping. With that, let's keep a few things in mind before we begin. We will start with a common mistake, which is the exact fit. So good news, you found a, a container that matches your payload perfectly. It's not the exact fit for your application though. We need to save room on all sides for refrigerant. There's also the topic of primary packaging which Samantha will go into. Yeah. Please first consider your primary packaging before reaching out to Polar Tech. This saves time and ensures we are finding a solution that works for you the first time. Some things to consider would be what your primary packaging is. 
Normally, you would see cakes or pies in a plastic clamshell in bakeries. However, when shipping these clamshells, they tend to get damaged easier in transit and might not be dry ice rated, uh, uh, easy cracking. So it's best to ship in either a pie, bo pie box or a heat shrunk poly material. Great. Another thing to consider is how many cakes you'll be shipping. Is it just one or multiple cakes? The weight of multiple cakes will mean that you will need more refrigerant and a larger container. How long will your package be in transit for? This determines the wall thickness of the insulated container you're using, as well as how much refrigerant will be needed. How cold do your cakes need to be when they arrive? Samantha, go ahead and uh, talk about this point for a moment. Yeah, so dry ice is the only way to keep things completely frozen solid. If your products can arrive partially thawed, still really cold, then ice packs will work for you. Please always precondition your product by refrigerating or freezing it. Also precondition your shipping con containers by placing them in a walk-in freezer or refrigerator if possible. What good is placing cold items in a hot shipping container straight off the receiving truck? Please give yourself enough time. Of course. And if you do intend on using dry ice, we have a dry ice resource on our website, polar-tech.com forward slash dry dash ice. That will be a handy resource for you. Our last preliminary consideration has to do with piping icing or filling. Samantha? Yes, there are many creative solutions when it comes to shipping your product. Item, items like sauce, icing, toppings can be separately frozen in piping or poly bags. A lot of time, times your customers want the items to be beautiful for guests upon arrival. Unfortunately, during shipping, there is shifting which occurs, which can cause products to get smushed. So including a separate topping is a solution which allows for your customers to make the finishing touches and it acts as another refrigerant. Just make sure to include, include easy instructions on a card or link a quick video with a QR code. That's a great idea. Yeah. We have come to our first step, which is to measure. To measure, you will need a ruler or a tape measure and a scale. We are measuring the length, width, and height of our product, as well as the weight. The length is usually the longest measurement in your payload. If you're measuring circular items, you could use the diameter instead of length and width. You will measure both individual components and the total payload. So if you measure your one pie, if you're shipping both together, you'll measure both. So here's our first pie. It is an apple pie, looks delicious. The diameter is nine inches and the height is two inches. See, the height is not standard all the way across the pie. You will measure from the, the highest point. That is the, your best rule of thumb. Next, we have a cheesecake. The diameter is seven and a half inches and the height is one and three quarters inches. This will become a familiar sight. We are shipping two pies put together. The length is nine and a quarter. The width is nine and a quarter. And the height is five inches because each of those pies is two and a half. It is very important to add one to two inches to each dimension to leave room for refrigerant. Our desired container inside dimensions will be around 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter by seven. Samantha, how exact do I have to measure? It is important to be pretty exact. Um, always err on the side of larger than smaller, just like the picture Laura showed of the apple pie. Um, this will allow for you to have enough room in the box for refrigerant. All of our co 
coolers are slightly tapered on the, at the bottom, which allows them to be pulled off the mold. So if you measure a little bit too small, it might not fit. I understand. And I am feeling overwhelmed by this whole topic. Can Polar Tech just take my products and pack it out for me? Yes, please send us your products. It is easiest when we receive it. We can take a look at it, um, fit it in some boxes, sample boxes that we can pull much quicker. Um, please always make sure to either freeze, precondition your product, include some packaging and some ice packs so that it arrives to us not smashed. And we can also work with your, your just empty pie boxes, empty pizza shippers, um, empty boxes, that'll help us as well. And we'll find a solution that works for you. That sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So step one is taken care of. We have measured our product. Step two is how much refrigerant do we use? I have a picture here of a line of ice bricks, which is a type of refrigerant we have. They range in size from three ounces to four pounds for each pack. It is a, a wide array meant to, to fit a variety of different products. For how much refrigerant to use, here's our familiar picture again. It weighs 62 ounces or 3.8 pounds. The part number of our cold packs will tell you how many ounces are in that cold pack in weight. For example, an IB16, an ice brick 16, is 16 ounces or one pound. You can mix and match your cold pack sizes to reach the total amount of refrigerant needed, which we'll get into on this slide. For example, if you have two 15 ounce packs and two 16 ounce packs, that will total your 62 ounces that you need, or you could choose five 12 ounce packs. So let's break this down together. The following are approximations. If you are shipping overnight, you can use half of the weight of your product to be the weight of your refrigerant, a two to one ratio of product to ice. 62 ounces times 0.5 is 31 ounces. You can achieve that by using two 15 ounce cold packs or five six ounce cold packs, for example. If you are shipping one to two days, you can use the same weight of your product as your refrigerant weight, a one to one ratio. This is an easy equation. 62 times one is 62 ounces. You can do four 16 ounce cold packs or five 12 ounce cold packs. If you are shipping three to five days, you will want to on average double the weight of your product to get your weight in refrigerant, a one to two ratio of products to refrigerant. 62 ounces times two is 124 ounces which can be achieved through six 20 ounce cold packs or eight 16 ounce cold packs. If you are shipping over five days, please contact us so that we can have a tailored solution just for your application. But wait, Samantha has a comment on this entire chart. Um, yeah, so when I'm packing out for customers, I always prefer to use a larger ice pack instead of multiple smaller ones, if appropriate. Um, larger ice packs have less surface area, so they maintain their temperature longer than a multiple small ones. You can still use a few small to surround on the sides to meet the weight and fill any air caps. Um, and you do not need all the same ice packs. You can use two 32 ounces and a couple of ice uh, 12 ounces on the side to fill those air cap air gaps. It just depends on your product, what you're shipping, the size of your packages, and um, your needs. Exactly. Yeah. Next, we have a picture of what that could look like. We used, because this shipment is about four pounds, we used eight pounds in refrigerant. That would be perfect for our three to five day shipping. 
doubling the weight of that product to get the weight of the refrigerant. This application worked well, and we will show you in a video slide to come that we were able to put those on all six sides of our product, and it, it worked effectively. <clears throat> Samantha, can I use fewer cold packs in the winter? You can use fewer cold packs in the winter, maybe closer to a one-to-one. -one. However, um, using the, the correct amount of refrigerant and cold chain packaging is very important in the winter. We often hear of shipments without the correct cold chain systems failing to perform in the winter due to the product being left on a hot, hot, hot tarmac in a building or warehouse, airport, car. All of these places will have their heaters on in the winter. Um, one, one year, once your product finally does it, delivers, your um, product will be sitting on your customer's porches in the, in the sun. It is very important to protect your product from these common instances with the correct amount of refrigerant and insulated containers. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. And if my product is already frozen, do I still need cold packs? Yes, this goes back to protecting your product from various shipping settings, whether that be in transit or at a warehouse ready to ship. We hear of carriers leaving whole pallets of frozen or refrigerated items next to airplanes or heaters in the winter. If you have no ice packs, then that packaging is going to fail. Thank you for the word of caution. <laughs> We have measured our product. We know how many ounces of refrigerant to use. Now we come to step three, which is which refrigerant do we pick? Each of these five cold packs have particular advantages, and I will briefly touch on each one. First up, we have grab and go. It is economical and single use. Our ice bricks line is very popular and it is also leak proof. I have a quick video after this slide to show you about it in action. Refreezer bricks are special because they hold on to their cold for 10% longer than standard gel packs. Their rigid shape maintains whether it is frozen or thawed. Our biodegradable packs are wonderful because both the plastic poly and the gel inside break down in a landfill setting. And lastly, we have our moisture safe line. It is perfect for keeping your goods safe from condensation during transit. When you order gel packs from us or refreezer bricks from us, remember that the cold pack shipping from Polar Tech will arrive not frozen. So you will need about a day to freeze a, a pack on its own or a couple stray packs. If they are packed in a case, it could take up to a week to freeze. And if they are in a pallet formation, it could take four to six weeks for it to freeze. So we recommend for speed of freezing to unpack those cases and those pallets. Next, we have ice bricks in action. Why are they called leak proof? Well, let's let's find out. We have our competitors lined up. And as we take about an inch off the corner, you can see it just dumps out all over our potential product. Mm -hmm. I would hate for this to happen to your cakes and pies. Mm -hmm. We come to ice bricks, however, and nothing comes out. It actually took being sliced all the way across the bottom for anything to come out. So you could clearly see who the winner is in this application. Samantha, I would love to add my logo to cold packs. Is that possible? Absolutely. So we have several methods of um, customizing your ice packs. We have the hot stamp method, which is an in-house option. And we also have a pre-printed poly option email us or re request a quote online on our website. 
Um, the minimum for the hot stamp is three skids and the logo is about a three by three image directly in the middle of your ice pack. These are good for the ice bricks, the grab and go, and the biodegradable line. Um, the colors you get to choose from are either red, black, blue, or green. And then we also have a pre-printed poly. The minimums for this are in the one to three truckloads, depending on your size. The logo, um, you have more options when it comes to colors and the pre-printed, your pre-printed image will be at random on the poly. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long will a cold pack stay cold? That is a very common question. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of variables that go into this. Um, usually people want to test it out by leaving the ice packs just on their kitchen counter to see how long that, that they will last. However, this is, an, an ac is not an accurate representation of their capabilities because you will still need the protective packaging and the ice packs and to eliminate air gaps. Usually what I tell customers is I use the ice packs every day in my lunch box. And by the end of the day, they're still frozen, a 16 ounce one. Um, so it really just depends on your packaging. Right. And another question I used to get a lot when I was in the reception role for four years here was how do I dispose of a cold pack? So I'll, I'll go into this one. If it is a moisture safe pack that has that felted exterior that absorbs condensation, that is not recyclable. Um, all of our cold packs are non-toxic and safe to reuse. So as long as they are intact, you would be able to reuse them for your application or see mm -hmm. if a school district or a food pantry could use them. But if it is time to dispose of them, it is possible just to cut them open, dump the contents in the trash, and then that outer plastic is number four plastic that can be recycled according to your state and local guidelines. And that will take care of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, measurements, check. Refrigerant weight, check. Refrigerant style, check. We have come to step four, which is which size container do we pick? When discussing wall thickness, this picture is what we're talking about. Pictured here is uh, an inch and a half. The following are rules of thumb, again with approximations. If you are shipping overnight, the wall thickness can be less than one inch. We have an overnight series that's perfect for that application. If you are shipping one to two days, on average, you will need a wall thickness of one to two inches. So our PX, XM, or Thermochill series are perfect for that. We will get into XM series because they're good for shipping pies and cakes and cheese and pizza and anything else that you could imagine. Three to five day shipping, you will need a wall thickness of two to three inches on average. That's available in our Thermochill series. If it's five or more days, please contact us. We want to find, uh, like I said, a tailored solution for you. We also have a bulk perishable line that's called Icebox. Please contact us for details about that through our website. And speaking of our website, if you are searching for part numbers and looking at our site, F, when an uh, insulated container ends in F, you're getting that high quality foam unit by itself. But if you order C, that is the foam and carton. So there's a a corrugated box that fits snugly around your payload, mm -hmm. around your, your insulated foam, and it's pre-assembled. So the, the top flaps are open, but it's ready to go. Or on our website, the inside dimensions are listed directly to the right of the part number. So for our two pi payload, the one that I said would become familiar, it is nine and a quarter in length, nine and a quarter in width, and five inches high. We have to add that one to two inches all the way around for our refrigerant. So our inside dimensions that we're looking for are between 10 and a quarter and 11 and a quarter for length, 10 and a quarter and 11 and a quarter for width, 
and between six and seven inches high. Now, does anything here match that? <laughs> yes, yes, we are very close and we will get into our XM series now. Samantha, will you take it away? Yes, so we actually have a line that is specifically designed for shipping cakes, cheese wheels, pizzas, um, that would be our XM line. XM stands for expandum. It has a common top and bottom, so the same length and width of the cooler, but it has varying heights. This allows for multi-size shipment. So if your quarter customer orders one, two, or three cakes or pizza pies, it saves money on packaging and freight. Um, they have many uses in which they are great. When the items, there are many uses in which these coolers are great when you're shipping multiples of the same size container, like those pies or pizza, the same same size multiple times. Sometimes they're not as not so great, um, which would be shipping a bunch of small items, piling them all up on each other. Um, it's very hard to get the lid on, and the items will spill out. But for those uniform multiple cakes and pies, it will work yep. just fine. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We do have an illustration next of um, the footprints, meaning like how how high we could stack things. Um, Samantha, would you like to go into detail about this? Yeah. So if you look at the image that Laura has on the screen, you have six different colors. Each color represents um, a different piece. Um, and then you can combine those pieces in different ways. So the first one, the, with the yellow, you have two, two XM7S, which will create a complete XM7S unit. But then you can use a different bottom, the XM7F with an XM9F to get a different height. And you can do this with all of the same items in the same line. Um, and that's how we came to use the cooler that we're going to use, the highlighted blue in the center on the right, the 235 XM5 it, um, deep, and it has, it's eight and a quarter deep, and it's 12 and three quarters by 12 and three quarters wide. Exactly. Let's look a little bit closer at this selection. So the 235C is what one? This is what it looks like straight on. comes with a corrugated box. Perfect for one to two day shipping, but because we have some flexibility in the size, it could go longer than that because we have room for more refrigerant. It has an inch and a quarter wall thickness, and we went over those dimensions already. It's a little bigger than what we had anticipated, but in the video, you will see that it fits perfectly with our refrigerant. Samantha, do we offer samples? Yes, we do offer samples. We do charge for the samples and for the shipping. However, you can use your own FedEx or UPS account number. Um, just give us a call or send us an email and we will get you a sample quote today. And what if you don't carry the size insulated container that I need? We have over 200 sizes of coolers of containers, so we're going to have something that fits your needs. Usually it's just a configuration um, issue. Give us, uh, send us the size of your product, either singularly or in multiples, and we'll find a solution that fits. Also, what are your minimums? Yes, so we have several minimums. If you are a new customer to Polar Tech, um, we have a $250 minimum before shipping and shipping and tax. Otherwise, um, the minimums for the coolers are either full tray quantities or case quantities, which vary by size, and then all reorders are only $100. Everyone, we have reached our fifth stage, which is to pack it out. So we have measured our product, we've picked how much refrigerant to use. We picked a style of refrigerant and now we have a container. So let's pack it out together. Refrigerants should be surrounded on by your product 
should be surrounded by refrigerants on as many sides as possible. Air gaps are not your friend, meaning you will need some dunnage, wadding, or shim, something like that to protect your cakes and pies and their packaging from moisture, contamination, and damage. So here's an example of cellulose wadding that we have used. Mm -hmm. The right fit is not too roomy and not too snug. All right, so let's get into some videos. This will be our two pie pack out that we have been discussing the whole time. So let's dive into it, Samantha. Yeah, so I'll just explain to you what we're doing in this video. We have our pies right here. They're wrapped in a white newsprint that'll just help um, absorb any condensation so your fancy pie boxes won't get damaged and they look beautiful for your customers to open. And then as we showed you, this is our 235 um, F cooler, it's foam only. I wanted to show you how when we open it, there's a gap, it opens um, with a base and a lid. So it's not your standard chest and lid style. That's what makes this cooler better for um, shipping uniform sized items instead of a bunch of small ones. We have a square base and a square lid, and we're going to put some of our ice packs down, the Refreezer Brick 15. That's what these are, just directly in the center. Um, we're going to take our, our pies. First, I just wanted to show you we have a plastic poly that we could put just to insulate it. Um, it doesn't Bubble wrap doesn't work as well, so we're going to instead use this absorbent uh, wadding material. We're going to place the pies down directly in the center on top of the ice packs. And we're just going to stack them because this is a two pie shipper. And we're going to put our refreezer bricks on the sides. Um, when I'm packing out, I like to butt the ice packs right up against each other in the corners. That way I can have a free corner to put the the, the dunnage material later. So right here, we're gonna put those ice packs and we're going to put some more wadding right on top to protect from the condensation of the ice bricks. And then we still have a couple of loose corners where they, we have air gaps. So we're gonna to wanna to fill them. You can use um, newsprint like I'm using here. If ice packs fit, you can also use ice packs. Um, the dunnage will make it a little bit lighter so that you're not paying extra in the wait for shipping more ice packs. And then it fits perfectly on top. And that's Wonderful. Yeah. Next, we have one pie that is shipping, our apple pie from the beginning. That will, it's meant for one to two day shipping, which means we use the same weight and refrigerant as we do in product. Mm -hmm. So take it away. Okay, so we're going to use the same shipper, but this is a single pie shipper. It has a square lid and a round base. Um, we're going to use, you can, what's nice about these is that it's interchangeable. You can use that as a lid or a base, whichever works better for what you're shipping specifically. We're going to put some dunnage material down right on top of the ice pack. Just tuck it in, put the pie right on top. We're going to get the dunnage material to keep the pies from shifting and just surround it on all of the sides. Um, we'll put some bubble wrap on top to protect from um, some damages and we'll just put the, the lid back on top. And that's our single pie shipper with a round base and a square lid. Okay, and we have one last video to show. This is for one cheesecake. We're going to be using wadding as well and it will be mm -hmm. overnight. So we could use half of the weight of that cake to be the weight of the refrigerant. Here we go. Okay, so we're using a single pie shipper. It has both a round lid and a round base. We're going to put our, our cake in. Um, we're gonna take some wadding material and just place it around the sides to keep that cake from shifting. Um, we're gonna take just some 
plastic poly, put it right on top. I like to tuck it in the corners. And then we're gonna take some of that more absorbent wadding to keep all that inflated air in your package. And then we will take our freezer brick and stick it right on top and it fits beautifully in this box. I love those examples. <laughs> yeah. Samantha, I want to know what other shipping materials do you sell? I see you've added some wadding. I, you've piqued yeah. my interest. What else do we have? We have everything you need to get started shipping cold chain today. We have the absorbent wadding, which is my favorite, um, the dunnage material, the newsprint, temperature awareness labels, which are very important. Um, a lot of times, if you have that bright temperature awareness label on it and you're not home, but your neighbor sees that it needs to refrigerate upon opening or upon arrival immediately, they'll take it and they'll put it in their freezer. We hear these stories all the time. Um, we also carry tape, tape dispensers, everything you need to get started. Wonderful. Yeah. Lastly, I want to know how many days it will actually take for my product to go from my dock to my customer's door. Sure, this is something that your carrier will be able to tell you about. Um, usually FedEx and UPS, they have a nice color coded map right on their website that'll tell you um, all of these dates surrounding where you're located or a one day or a two day. And you can also reach out to your local FedEx or UPS sales rep they'll be more than happy to help. Okay. Thank you, Samantha. You're welcome. Next up is testing. So we've gone through all our steps and it is very, very important for you to test for yourself mm -hmm. and compare what you're doing now with maybe uh, something better for you. Mm -hmm. We have in-house testing to be able to support you in this. We have temperature testing, drop testing, meaning can it be dropped from five feet? We could find out together. Vibration testing and compression testing. And we also have testing available to meet the specifications for Amazon or ASTM, FedEx, ISO, ISTA, and UNDOT has met, meaning it, it is such a benefit to you to be able to have our lab at your disposal. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, there is an option for third-party testing, so you have peace of mind. We, we do encourage you to test for yourself, but like I said, mm -hmm. we are here if you need us. All right, so we have reached the end of our presentation. I'm going to turn on the chat so that we could talk together and um, discuss what you think. We really want to be a resource for you. We want to be yes. here from, from the beginning to the end of your shipping. And any way that we could help you, let me know, let Samantha know. Um, I will walk you through how to submit a quote on our website. Um, just one moment, let me... Let me turn on the chat really quick. So real quick, Laura, I just want to discuss um, ways that the customer can test their product on their own. Um, send us an email. We can get you a couple sample coolers. Once you get your sample coolers in refrigerant, you're going to just take your product, place it in the container, um, purchase a thermometer, and just stick it right in the box. And then you can drive around with with the, your, your pack out, testing it in the trunk of your car, leave it outside. Um, and that way you can monitor it to see what temperature it's at when it reaches its excursion point. Um, so that, that's how you test on your own before you, you um, reach out to us for more testing procedures. Thank you for that. That's very valuable. Yeah. You're welcome. Just make sure don't, not to puncture the ice packs that happens with the, the thermometer. Yeah, be careful about Try that. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. All right, the chat is open. If you have any questions for us um, to talk about how to place a quote with us, what you'll do is go to polar-tech.com, hover over the products over in the top part of the menu. The upper left part will say insulated containers and shippers, food application. 
So click on that. And then we have a whole section on the bottom row for cakes and pies. Halfway down in this selection is what we picked, the 235C. And if you click on any part number on this menu, <clears throat> there'll be a big blue button on the right that says add to quote request. So you could just shop to your heart's content and let us know what you're interested in. We could pair you with a representative after you submit that and we could get the ball rolling. So I um, I just really want to thank everyone for, for joining us today. I greatly appreciate Samantha's help and expertise. Yeah. I yeah. am very happy that this went well. And I I think I think this was helpful. I hope that you have a, a good rest of your day and that we're here if you need us. All right. Yeah, thank you for having me, Laura. This was a lot of fun. Good. All right. I'm calling it a day. Thank you so much. Bye now. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you.